Greetings and salutations. My name is Dr. Preston Wilson, Assistant Professor of Music Education at Westminster Choir College of Rider University. And I would like to invite you to explore a little more with the DuPage Symphony Orchestra's February concert, American Jazz and American Spirituals. This concert will be Saturday, February 11th, 2023. The featured composers for this concert are none other than William Grant Steele with Symphony No. 2 in G minor, Song of a New Race, and George Gershwin, Concerto in F major for orchestra and piano. Let's dive in with our first composer, William Grant Steele Jr., also known as the Dean of African American Composers. He was born in Woodville, Mississippi on May 11th, 1895. Shortly after his birth, his father passed, causing his mother to move to Little Rock, Arkansas, where he was raised. His mother would remarry and his stepfather would nurture Steele's budding musical interests and talent. Steele studied the violin at the age of 14 or 15 and taught himself to play a number of other instruments, excelling at the cello and the oboe. When it came time for college, Steele attended Wilberforce University, a historically black college also known as HBCU. However, he went as a pre-med major in order to appease his mother. While his major was not music, he spent a considerable amount of time conducting the university band as well as composing and arranging. He ultimately left Wilberforce without finishing, but went on to study music at Oberlin College and the New England Conservatory. Steele would move to New York where he would contribute and be a part of the Harlem Renaissance, a blossoming of African-American culture that sought to challenge discrimination in this country. Because of Jim Crow, the name of the racial caste system which operated primarily, but not exclusively in southern and border states between 1877 and the mid-1960s, Steele achieved many firsts. He was the first African-American composer to have a symphony performed by a professional orchestra in the United States, the Symphony No. 1 Afro-American. It was premiered by Howard Hansen and the Rochester Philharmonic in 1930. He was also the first African-American to conduct a major symphony orchestra in the United States when he led the Los Angeles Philharmonic in 1936. In the world of opera, his Troubled Island was the first by an African-American to be performed by a major opera company, the New York City Opera, in 1949. And that same opera was the first by an African-American to be nationally televised. For this concert, the DSO will be playing Symphony No. 2 in G minor, Song of a New Race. It is believed to be an extension or an evolution of his first symphony, the Afro-American Symphony. Steele was concerned with the position of African Americans in the United States society at that time, and it is reflected in many of his works. For example, he utilized the harmonic and rhythmic language of jazz and blues, and he had gestures that suggested call and response, elements of the African American essence. Steele said, if Symphony No. 1 represented the Negro of days not far removed from the Civil War, then G minor represented the American colored man of today in so many instances, a totally new individual produced through the fusion of white, Indian, and Negro bloods, his own personal racial identity.
William Grant Steele died December 3, 1978, and was able to experience the tributes, honors, and acclaim he had earned. He received many honorary degrees from a number of various institutions, including Wilberforce, Howard University, Oberlin, Bates College, University of Arkansas, Pepperdine University, New England Conservatory of Music, the Peabody Conservatory of Music, and the University of Southern California. He's a two-time Guggenheim Fellow and the second Harmon Award winner, multiple citations from Los Angeles and Arkansas, and many, many awards. Throughout his life, he would marry twice, first to Grace Bundy in 1915, and then secondly to Werner Arvey in 1939, American librettist, pianist, and writer with whom he often collaborated with. Throughout his marriages, he would have six children and one granddaughter. Our other composer is Mr. George Gershwin, born Yaakov Gershwin, September 26, 1898, in Brooklyn, New York. Being born into a Russian Jewish family, his parents, Moish Gershwitz and Rosa Bruskin, decided to change their surname to Gershwin upon immigrating to the United States. He is the second child of four, Ira, George, Arthur, and Francis. George Gershwin's musical journey was quite unique. His family did not necessarily expect him to be musical. His parents acquired a piano that was intended for Ira. With Ira being the oldest, he was the astute scholar, while George was expected to be, as his father put it, a bum because of his behavior. As an adolescent, George Gershwin was quite mischievous. He was prone to be involved in fights, start fires, and theft. This is peculiar as he did not come from a particularly impoverished family. George Gershwin attributed music to being the reason he turned from his naughty ways. And much to his family's surprise, he was the first to play the piano by teaching himself. In his own words, whatever I know about music, I've wrenched out for myself. I had no parents to stand over me and encourage me in the little tunes that I had used to make up. Gershwin's musical career began in 1914 when he dropped out of high school. He started working in Tin Pan Alley, advertising and promoting sheet music by previewing tunes on the piano. In 1917, he became a Broadway rehearsal pianist. While he was highly sought after as an accompanist, his desire to compose was unfulfilled. The following year, he was offered a position as a staff composer at Harms Publishing Company to publish his own music. His musical success was complemented by his working relationship with his brother Ira. With George behind the piano and Ira behind the pen, the dynamic duo created Broadway hits and popular songs, cementing their place in the jazz age of the 1920s and 1930s. When asked by interviewers, which comes first, the words or the music? Ira's standard response was, the contract. Some notable highlights include Someone to Watch Over Me, Rhapsody in Blue, An American in Paris, and Porgy and Bess. George Gershwin's goal was to bring respectability to jazz music, because in 1922, it was still being regarded as degrading, pathological, nerve-irritating, sex-exciting music, as evidenced in a New York American editorial. He did this by melding the elements of classical and jazz into his works, bringing us to his concerto in F major for orchestra and piano, which is often called Gershwin's most classical composition. The concerto was premiered by Walter Dame Roche and the New York Symphony Orchestra at Carnegie Hall on December 3rd, 1925, with Gershwin as the piano soloist. The conductor described Gershwin as the prince who has taken Cinderella jazz by the hand and openly proclaimed her a princess to the astonished world, no doubt to the fury of her envious sisters. Critics were baffled at how to classify this work as jazz or as classical. At our concert, we have the immense pleasure of having the incomparable Winona Wang as our piano soloist, the first prize winner of the 2018 Concert Artists Guild International Competition.
In his personal life, George Gershwin never married. However, he was known to have been romantically involved with Pauline Heifetz, the sister of Yasha Heifetz, the violinist. He was also known to be involved with Catherine Swift, known as Kay, whom was already married, and Margaret Manners, a married chorus girl. Manners would also be the alleged mother of Alan Gershwin, George Gershwin's alleged son. And music history has never been this exciting. It's almost better than a soap opera. I certainly hope you will join us and enjoy the DuPage Symphony Orchestra's February concert, American Jazz and American Spirituals, on Saturday, February 11th, featuring William Grant Steele's Symphony No. 2 in G minor, Song of a New Race, and George Gershwin's Concerto in F major for orchestra and piano. It is sure to be an evening of great music and great fellowship, because remember, music is not just something you do or hear, it's something you experience, and we can't wait to experience this concert with you.